New tonight, the body of a woman found inside her apartment in the Bronx, and now authorities are searching for a relative to question in connection to her death. Eyewitness News reporter Lucy Yang is in Belmont tonight. Lucy? Everybody's got a dark side. Deep down in their blood. Everybody's got a Violence is at an all-time high. It's no secret that America's crime rate has skyrocketed significantly. But one of the things that are up is relationship violence. Someone killing their significant other over a quarrel, whether it be cheating, finances, just wanting to get rid of that person. There are a lot of stories that I can tell you about those who fell victim to those circumstances, but there was one recently that truly stood out. Meet Dominique Ben David. This New York native was coined somewhat socially awkward. She was also one of those girls that just never seemed to feel like she fit in anywhere. At a very young age, Dominique would discover her love for art, singing. She was just a normal child. But however, things in the household weren't exactly stable. Her friends would testify that her life was tumultuous and her household was very toxic growing up. Even going through these things as a child, she would still stand up strong. She would be able to escape into her own reality using music and her art. Dominique was never a girl to shy away from who she truly was. She was herself unapologetically. Behind the rambunctious, energetic young girl seen on social media doing dances, doing cover songs, just basically living her life. On the other side of that, was a dark side because friends would testify that she suffered from abuse in her own home. Dominique was raised alone with no siblings, just her, her mother, and a revolving door of boyfriends. At the age of 14, Dominique Ben David would come up missing. A statewide search would be pursued. Dominique would be brought safely home. The reasons for her disappearance were never specified. However, I can speculate and say that due to the testimony of the friends that alleged that abuse took place, I'm not shocked. After all, everyone who runs away isn't necessarily rebellious. Some are actually running for a reason. So here Dominique is, 14 years old, she's returned back to the home. But things don't get better, they only get worse. A few years passes, and Dominique is around 16, 17 years old. Well, the relationship with her mother had begun to slowly deteriorate, so much so that her mother would send her off to live in Malibu. Now, by this time, Dominique is around 18 years old. She's had her fair share of trouble. Her and her mother just can't get along, so she decides to move to Malibu to get her life together. When Dominique moved to Malibu, she felt like the friends around her just didn't miss her as much as she expected. And she began to feel like maybe she didn't have any friends at all. But she was still okay because she still has the love of her life, which is drawing. Dominique was an artist. She also sang in her spare time. After a short stay in Malibu, Dominique would return to Flushing, New York back home where she belonged. When she returns, she would then meet an acquaintance named Anthony Portis, someone who shared the same likes that she had. He was in the anime just like her. I mean, they were basically one person. At this point, it seemed like love was in the air. Dominique finally had someone to call her own, someone that she felt like was there for her and would stick by her side no matter what. But just like things always seem to go wrong with her, once again, Dominique would receive the short end of the stick. 
because she wasn't the only one. He had another girlfriend, but for safety purposes, I will not name her. Now, this wasn't polygamy. This was more of a running back and forth between each girl type of thing. But regardless of their situation, Dominique felt Anthony was hers and you couldn't tell her anything different. Now by 2018, a different situation would arrive because Dominique would go to her mother's house in Queens after being talked into robbing her mother by her boyfriend. They would go to her apartment and steal $200, jewelry, and a few miscellaneous items. After this, the ties with her mother were severed. Her own mother even opted to press charges. So after this occurs, now it's just Dominique and her boyfriend, somewhat of a Bonnie and Clyde, two lovers ready to face the world. But love couldn't save the relationship. Dominique would begin to take to social media to start expressing her feelings. On more than one occasion, she would make it clear that she was thinking of harming herself. The last post about harming herself would come around 2019. This is during a period when her and her boyfriend were broken up. Dominique would write, I feel like I should let anyone who cares know that I am thinking of hurting myself. I cannot deal with people hurting me anymore. I need to feel relief. I'm a piece of shit and will never amount to anything. All I wanted to do was be with my Aja and I can't because I am a people pleaser and will say anything to get out of trouble. How could I lie to my lover about not being faithful? I couldn't convince him of my innocence to save our relationship. He doesn't trust my love and I don't blame him. I don't deserve better and there isn't anyone because he's the only one for me. He is the best boyfriend I ever had and I will always love him forever, no matter what. To wrap things up, I will never trust anyone to be my friend ever again. Friendship isn't real because everyone has their own intentions and you never know what they are. So you have to leave them for your sake or their own. Now after Dominique made this post, she didn't harm herself. She would get back with her boyfriend. Only this is around 2020 and it won't be any better because when she got back with her boyfriend, her and the other girl that he was messing with would all move into one apartment together, which would prove to be a recipe for disaster. Neighbors would testify that all they ever heard coming out of that apartment was fights, dishes breaking, things being bumped around, women being beat on, with no love being existing in that household. In the end of February 2020, things would take a turn for the worse. Anthony Portis would return to the apartment in which then he would begin arguing with the girls in the hallway. Now, whatever they were arguing about has not been disclosed. Anthony Portis would force the two girls inside of the apartment, but then he would keep them hostage for two full days. On March 2nd, his other girlfriend would end up escaping while he was asleep. However, Dominique would stay behind. Anthony's other girlfriend had fled the apartment and she went to a shelter. She even opted to press charges on Anthony. About a month later, on April 11th of 2020, the police would go to the apartment that way they can get her account of what happened. Only they discovered she wasn't there. Now when they got there, that's when the neighbors started complaining that there was a foul odor coming from inside of the apartment. They said that the last thing that they remember was fighting about a month ago, but then they said that it got eerily quiet because all the neighbors around them had got so used to them fighting, they just thought something was off because they weren't hearing anything. So the police decide to go to the apartment and gain entry. But when they get inside, the reality of the situation would be revealed. In April of 2020, Dominique Ben David would be found decomposed inside of her apartment. At the time of the discovery, 
her decomposition was so advanced that they couldn't even tell how she died. However, during the coroner's report, they would come to find that she was beaten to death. Dominique would suffer fractures on both sides of her neck. The crime scene would detail finding broken knives and broken knife handles scattered around the body. The coroner would conclude that Dominique Ben David was killed as early as March 1st. However, she wasn't found until April 11th, which means she spent almost a full month and a half with no one looking for her. No missing report was filed. No one ever even cared. In fact, Dominique sat so long that she didn't even have any arms. You see, New York City has a bad rat problem and the rats had begun to feast on the corpse itself. Now what bothered me about this is that Dominique had every red flag in the world for someone to cuddle her, someone to hug her, someone to be there to care at all. She gave plenty of signs. She even told people that she was thinking of hurting herself, but yet no one came to her rescue. She held on to the only love that she knew, and in the end, it would kill her. Anthony Portis would be arrested for the murder of Dominique Ben David. He is now currently being held. The reasons behind Anthony killing Dominique are unknown, but he did leave a clue on his Facebook. On his Facebook, his cover photo would detail, y'all know one day I'm gonna snap right, and snap he did. He would take out Dominique, but here's where it gets funny for me. You see, the coroner detailed that Dominique may have died as early as March the 1st. Now think back when I told you Anthony's other girlfriend didn't leave that house until March the 2nd. Now pair that with the fact that she left the apartment when it lived inside of a shelter, never even came back to the apartment to get her things, nor check on Dominique knowing what situation she was in. Did I forget to mention that the charges that she even filed against Anthony Portis were filed late. Now, if you're thinking that I'm insinuating that his other girlfriend had something to do with the murder, I'm not. I'm merely stating the fact that it's feasible that she knows way more than she is telling. What do you think about it? Make sure you leave your feedback in the comments about that. I really want to know you guys' opinion. I mean, it's just funny in itself. Three people living in an apartment. He was dating both of them back and forth. Somewhere down the line, it was animosity between those girls. So, think about that. The last post to be shared on her Facebook would be an eerie photo of an anime cartoon of a guy choking at a girl. Right before that, and just months prior to her death, she would write, waiting for hopeful signs. I don't know how shit is gonna fix itself. I wanted to. This past ride was crazy. I still want him. Still want to feel him under my skin. I long for this danger wild man and this love will definitely be the death of me. I cannot stop going back for more. I'm sorry Dominique felt like that's all she deserved. I'm sorry that she died alone and had no one in her corner. I truly am. Rest in peace, Angel. You are truly in a better place now. Hopefully someone can learn from your story. And remember, Dominique died alone. So if you could do me one quick favor, and that's go to her Facebook page under Paris Dominique Sosa. Please go there and leave your condolences. Flood her page with nothing but love, like the love that she didn't receive here. Mm -hmm.